All righty. Welcome to Breaking Down Exif Tool. Um, probably one of our favorite forensic tools slash pen testing tools because it's so neat and cool. So who am I? You guys are probably tired of seeing the same pictures. I promise I'm going to try and find more. But for those of you who don't know, I'm a third year cybersecurity and criminal justice major. I am, in fact, one of the best OLs. Um, my students said that to me. That's how I know it's true. Um, I do love making databases in MySQL. I think it's a really fun way to stay organized, and I'm OCD crazy. Um, I'm also a huge caffeine addict. I'm getting better, I promise. And I do have a minor taco obsession. Heap my homemade street tacos. They were bomb. Slayers nicely. All right. Uh, I'm Finn. I'm also a third year cybersecurity and criminal justice major. Uh, I'm the co-president of ACSOC, which is the American Cancer Society on campus. We organize Relay for Life. We should all go. I have to say that. Uh, my four main food groups are chicken nuggets, caffeine, popcorn, and sugar, at least two of which I eat every day. Um, I love computer system forensics. I started learning it this semester in 464. Slays, I also love naps. The naps and caffeine really go well together. Um, these are some personality pictures of me. Pretty disgusting. Also, side note. I didn't know this one in the bottom middle was me until I stared at it for five minutes. Yeah. Four chaotic. So, orientation week for you. What is Exif Tool? So it's an open source software program that you can use to read, write, and manipulate image, audio, video, and PDF metadata. So what is metadata? It basically is all of the background information on pretty much everything. So what you can see as a user is not really all that's going on. So Different services like Metadata++, Flickr, and a whole bunch of other them, whole bunch of, of them, whoa, they show you metadata. And what you can use that for is, like we said, a lot of forensics, a lot of pen testing, use it for everything. And it has a lot of features. You know, it's really, really fast. It's completely customizable to what you're looking for. You can use it to extract thumbnail images. And it also generates a whole bunch of different hashes. These are a couple of the most popular ones, as long as the okay, captions are not cutting it off. Um, yeah, and it's super cool. So how can you use it? So lots of companies look at a lot of hidden information that you wouldn't really be able to see that's embedded within an image file. So you can organize and categorize these images to your liking and whatever you're primarily you're looking for. It'll also allow you to track history of changes. So if you want to look at dates modified, dates created, dates even deleted, you can see all of that. And it also ensures images meet certain standards. So for instance, if you were to take a picture on your cell phone, it'll show you that information, show you exactly you know, what phone was used, what the specs were, all of that fun stuff to help you get a clear picture of exactly what's going on. So some of the real world uses, applications of Exif tool, uh, it can be used in criminal investigations or trials to verify the validity of crime scene photos, which isn't something that happens a ton. Um, but one of my friend's dads is a crime scene photographer, and he sometimes does have to go into court and say, yeah, I took these photos. So that also um, can be used in that sense. Uh, you can also piece together metadata, create a timeline in digital forensic investigations. Uh, you can also edit the metadata of your own pictures or videos before you like post them online to protect your personally identifiable information, which I'm going to break that principle in about two slides from now. And you can also batch process photos and videos. Uh, you can change data for multiple files at once. Disclaimer, I searched for this image forever, but Exif tool is primarily used for forensic analysis and penetration testing. You know, you need to use the tool responsibly and ethically. Um, don't go kind of crazy and try to be that type of person. We all know one or have met one. Um, I am one. I got to stop. This duck told me to stop. So that's your disclaimer. But here are some basic commands. So if you were to type exit tool and then, you know, whatever image file you're looking for, you'll get a list that can be really long. It might be really short, but it'll display all the metadata that you can see. Um, if you want to look for specific tags, you can put tag G and it'll show you specific things that you're looking for. If you want to use GPS all, that's where you'll find like the geolocation, you know, where the image was taken, you know, what are its coordinates. And then you can also remove metadata except for specific tags. That's some of the customization I was talking about. Um, this command will help you do that. So if you're only looking for camera information, you're only looking for location, 
Um, if you're looking for PDF versions, maybe users, creators, you can filter that really easily. And then you can also edit metadata, which is super cool. So if you want to do that, you have a couple steps. So obviously, you have to locate the path to the file you want to look at. Look at the current metadata just by running exit tool. And then you can make some changes. So for instance, tag title is new title. Obviously, you'd put in your new title there. For batch processing, kind of similar, add a star, it'll do the same thing. And then to view your new changes, you run the command again, and it'll show you the new generated list. Make backups of your files. Um, that is something that I've learned the hard way in pen testing. Um, you always want to make sure you have backups of your original files, just in case you do something silly like I did and delete everything. Or you make changes and realize maybe those weren't the changes that you wanted to have. Always having a backup ensures that you don't have to restart from zero every single time you do it. And this is the cute little command you would do to do that. Very simple, very easy. There are also a whole bunch of advanced features with Exit Tool. Like I've said before, adding and modifying tags is something that's very important and very cool. You can also do conditional processing by adding some if statements. You can preserve the original date and time of an edit. So like I said, if you make some changes, make a copy, you know, you can go back and see when you did this. If you take four days to do a project, you might forget why you did it. Maybe the time will help you remember. You can also use it to create sidecar files, which are super cool. You can do a lot of group editing. You can also edit embedded documents. And there's a whole bunch of other advanced features. But these were definitely the top ones that stood out to me the most. Now we're going into a quick little example. You can see a silly little picture I took of myself the other day as I was leaving uh, Net Network Services Lab. And that was how I felt um, filled with rage over boy. That's just how it be. Uh, so you can see a lot of the metadata in the screenshot. Some of the important things I highlighted in blue, like you can see the kind of phone I have, the software I'm running, when I took the picture, all kinds of fun, silly little things like that. You can look at it more if you so choose. Um, another example is this picture I took a hot minute and a half ago. Uh, you can see I had the uh, iPhone 5 back then, so we've come quite a way. Uh, I took this in 2014, so I was 11. That's awful. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you can see things about my camera. Uh, what's interesting about this one is that it has some geographic information, so you can look at where I took this photo, uh, and that's kind of cool, and it's very specific as well. Uh, and before I get O-sinted, this is where the photo was taken, so you can look up the GPS coordinates I was at on that day. There you go. I wonder why you put that slide in. That makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Live, laugh, love, O-sint. Anyway, so now I kind of wanted to go through a little, a little case study. So we are given a forensic image created by Uncase, and then a forensic investigator is tasked with examining the image using FTK and to create a report. So using FTK, which is separate from Exit Tool, but first had to go through that, we found emails, images, videos, a Google search of ATM card stealing, uh, numbers of celebrities' visa cards, some appointments relating to theft and drug use or peddling, and a lot of many more suspicious and interesting and funny things. For reference, this is like FTK and NCASE are really, really cool tools. I highly recommend you all take computer system forensics and you will learn about how all of these cool things work. They're very awesome. So this is a list of the files I analyzed. There's some checks. There's a lot of checks. There's a confidential business letter, which is probably my favorite, um, a video called Happy, and the guy in the video is not happy. Uh, he very much breaks his computer. Um, a, a fake prescription, and then a picture of a small meth lab, as opposed to a medium or large sized meth lab. All right, so here are the uh, files that we looked at. You can kind of see there's a lot of checks. Uh, the confidential business letter is in a document, kind of mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, so here's what we found. Uh, the meth lab image was encoded using progressive DCT Huffman coding, which is a really efficient way of compressing data, especially large files. 
uh, check one was modified March 6, 2007 at 102 in the morning, typical CSEC work hours. Um, the confidential business letter document, which is probably my favorite file that we analyzed, the subject was let, let's scam the people. The author was Rasco bad guy. Keywords are Nigeria, confidential Nigerian central bank, Apex, and National Petroleum Corporation. Comments, this letter will really get them to give up their money. We need to get this out to any, anyone we identify at the old folks home. So like, check in on your grandparents and make sure that they are, you know, not fallen victim to these kinds of scams. Uh, this document was created on August 1st, 2007 and modified a little bit later. Category, scam, big, big surprise there. You know. Make sure that you know the Nigerian prince actually doesn't want your money. Yes. That's the takeaway here. He does not need your $100,000. You need your $100,000. Uh, the client was noted as greedy people. It came from the scam department because where else would it come from? Destination elderly people targeting vulnerable populations from the money division. It was forwarded to John Washer and West Mansu. West Mansu uh, was one of the primary users who describes we identified the source that came from Nigeria. And then it also gives you a phone number associated with this, which is so interesting and funny. And then um, after we used FTK to carve one of the files, we found that the carved 262 file was written by Adobe Photoshop 4. I have no idea what version of Adobe is current, so. It's not 4, I'll it's tell you that sure one. It's not 4. So here's some, some little screenshots of this, uh, of the encoding process used on the meth lab image. Uh, this is the modified date of the check. Here's the first part of the confidential business letter doc. There's a lot, also a lot of really interesting things in here uh, that you can look at and check out. Just kind of funny to read um, more about that. Uh, you know, it was in Microsoft Word because why wouldn't it be? And then I didn't highlight this one, sorry. Uh, but you can see that it was written by Adobe Photoshop. So you know that this guy was trying to scam some people, fraud some checks, as you do if you need money. Um, so here are some conclusions from the information that I just presented. Uh, Wes Mantooth, the user of the drive we examined, has been into some sketchy stuff, check fraud, as well as many other crimes, whole laundry list. Uh, he was also possibly scammed, more than likely scammed by the most typical phishing email possible. Like I wrote a better one in CSEC 140. Like pick a, pick a better scam than the Nigerian prince that needs your money. Come on, so overdone, pick a new one. Maybe he needed money after he gave it all away. That's why he was doing fraud. Uh, and also that exit tool is a really powerful resource that serves as an aid to, digi to digital forensic, forensic investigators. Ah. And thank you. Any questions? Zach? No? You're waiting to clap. I'm sorry, Phil's covering you. Anthony, do you have a question? It is very cross applicable. I know, what challenge was it for Lisa CTF? One of them we ended up using FTK Imager for, and it was actually pretty cool. Or was it Viewer? It was one of them. Um, I think it, whichever one was the cat photos one. Um, you can use a lot of these forensic tools to find CTF flags, especially in some of those challenges. Um, like I said, you can also use them to find a lot of cool stuff. I actually tried to use it when I was OSINTing Bill Sackle. Um, I wanted to look at a couple of the papers he wrote, which is nosy, per usual. Any other questions? Chase K? Yeah, this question is uh, directed at Finn. Do um, you think using exit tool on a lot of these forensic tools possibly find um, a certain um, piece of attire in, in any in enter? It could. I'm not sure, though. Do you know what one of those could be? Um... Maybe like a sick lanyard, I'm kind of oh, thinking. Clap it off, everybody. Yeah. All right. Thank you.